So in the previous topic, we discussed about the auxiliary commutative inverters. Now we'll discuss about the complementary commutative inverter. If two inductors L1 and L2 are tightly coupled, firing one of the thyristor turns off the another thyristor in the same arm. This type of commutation is known as complementary commutation. Circuit is also known as McMurray Bedford inverter. The circuit operation can be divided into three modes. Assume the load current IM remains constant as shown in this waveform. And in the following analysis, we redefine the time origin T equals to zero at the beginning of each mode. This is an equivalent circuit for the mode one. This mode begins when T2 is turned on and T1 turns off. At the start of this mode, the capacitor C2 is charged to Vs, whereas C1 is at zero volts, as it is shorted by the thyristor T1. The voltage across the L2 equals to Vs, as these two are in parallel. This is VL2. Current through L2 induces a voltage of VL1 is equals to Vs across L1. So VL1 will become Vs due to the current flowing through the L2. A reverse voltage V AK equals to source voltage Vs minus inductor voltage VL1 minus VL2. So we will be getting minus Vs is the voltage applied across T1 and the forward current of T1 is forced to 0. I T1 becomes 0. I T2 rises its level of instantaneous load equals to Im. Assuming C1 equals to C2 equals to Cm. If you assume this loop that Vs, C1, C2 and minus Vs, then the capacitor voltage 1 by Cm integral IC1 dt plus Vc1 at t equals to 0 minus 1 by Cm integral IC2 dt plus Vc2 at t equals to 0 equals to Vs. That would be equation 1. At the initial position, uh, Vc1 equals to 0 and Vc2 equals to Vs. If you substitute this initial values in the equation number 1, then you are going to get IC1 equals to IC2. Let this be equation number 2. Use the KCL at node B IM minus IC1 plus I1 minus IC2 equals to 0. IM plus I1 equals to IC1 plus IC2. From the equation number 2, these two are equal, so we can write this as 2 IC1. Let this be equation number 3. From which we can write IC1 equals to IM plus I1 by 2, which equals to IC2 also. Assume L1 equals to L2 equals to LM and the loop formed between L2, P2 and C2. LM d I1 by dt plus 1 by Cm integral I C2 dt minus Vc2 at t equals to 0 equals to 0. Let this be equation number 4 and this be 5. Initially this value equals to I1 and Vc2 which equals to Vs. Then we are going to get the solution I1 of t equals to 2 Im cos omega t plus Vs square root of 2 Cm by Lm sin omega t minus Im. Let this be equation number 6 where omega equals to 1 divided by square root of 2 Lm Cm. Let this be 7th equation. The voltage across L2 V L2 at t equals to V L1 at t which equals to V C at t equals to Lm B I1 by dt. This equals to you are going to get Vs cos omega t minus 2 Im square root of Lm by 2 Cm sin omega t. Let it be question number 8. Reverse vast voltage across T1 
is given by v a k at t equals to v s minus 2 v l 2 that equals to v s minus 2 v s cos omega t minus of minus plus 4 i m square root of l m divided by 2 c m sin omega t. Let it be 90 equation. The available turn of time can be determined from the condition that when the voltage V A K at T equals to T of equals to 0 in the above equation, which after simplification we are going to get T of equals to square root of 2 L M C M of cos inverse of 1 by 2 1 plus x square under the square root minus tan inverse of x equation number 10 where x equals to i m by v s square root of 2 l m by c m three equation number 11 the circuit turn of time is dependent on the load current i m and will be maximum when i m equals to 0 so the maximum value of turn of time t of max equals to in equation 11 that i m equals to 0 then x equals to 0 then substitute that in equation number 10 then you are going to get t of max equals to pi by 3 of 2 lm cm that will be equation number 12. Mode 1 ends when the voltage on the capacitor c2 becomes 0 that means vc2 becomes 0 and vc2 tends to change in the opposite direction. The time duration for this mode can be found by the condition that VL2 T equals to T1M equals to VC2 T equals to T1M equals to 0, which is also condition for peak thyristor current Vs cos omega T1M minus 2 IM square root of LM by 2 CM sine omega T1M equals to 0. Then from this Tm that equals to T1m equals to square root of 2lm cm tan inverse of 1 by x number 13. The thyristor current IT2 becomes maximum at this point. Now IT2 equals to I1 at T equals to T1m equals to I1 which is the maximum value IP equation number 14. Mode 2. This mode begins when a diode D2 starts conducting. Equivalent circuit is as shown here. The energy stored in the inductor L2 is lost in a circuit formed by T2, D2, L2. Then the load current I, L, L T equals to I M also flows through the diode D2. If Vd is the forward voltage drop of diode D2 and the thyristor T2. The instantaneous current I2 for mode 2 will be given by that Lm d i2 by dt plus Vd equals to 0. The initial conditions I2 at t equals to 0 equals to the maximum current which reached at the end of the mode 1. Then I2 of t equals to ip minus vd by lm into t let it be 15 and 16. This mode ends when i2 of t falls to 0 and t2 turns off due to self computation The duration of this time let us represent with t to m equals to IP LM divided by VD. Let this be equation number 17. Mode 3. This is the equal for mode 3. This mode begins when T2 turns off. Diode D2 continues to carry the load current until the load current falls to 0. That IM falls to 0. The reverse mass voltage for T2 is provided by the forward voltage drop of the diode D2. This is regarding the McMurray-Bedford inverter 
which is also a complementary competitor inverter. If this video is useful, please like, share and subscribe.